Mr. Madlock, are you all right? I don't know. I heard the report on my radio. What the hell happened? Somebody tried to kill me. What? Pickup truck ran me off the road. Deliberately? Yes, deliberately. Ow! Kept ramming me until I lost control. Take it easy, will you? What did this pickup look like? Cream colored, an older model. Uh, uh, paint was faded, looked like the hood was all rusted. I couldn't see the license plate. What is that? Battery acid? Did you get a look at the driver? No, but whoever it was didn't want me to tell you what I found out at the undertaker's. Which was what exactly? I found out that arrangements had already been made to ship Ramon Comanera's body to El Salvador before he was even dead. The freight order was placed on the 17th, three days before the accident. You're sure about that? I saw the books. Tell me how this undertaker knew he had a body to ship before Ramon was even dead. That boy's death was no accident, Sheriff. It was murder. Tell you what, Mr. Matlock, since I'm the one with the star on my chest and you're the one who's getting patched up like an old tire, let me handle this. Ow! Sorry. I ain't gonna do no such thing. Come on, E.J. You wanna look at my books? You go get yourself a search warrant. Old Rusty over there let Mr. Matlock look at your books? Rusty's brain is so addled from that rap garbage he listens to all day, he don't hardly know up from down, and you know it. He's hiding something, Sheriff. Yeah, Mr. Matlock. I am not, you nosy old bag of gas. Better that than a bald-faced liar. All right, that's enough. E.J., if I have to, I will get a warrant. So either I see the books now or I see them later. It's as simple as that. You owe me, Dewey. There, see? Ramon Comanera's remains to be shipped the 24th. Order called in on... Order called in on the 20th. Made the call as soon as I got back from picking him up. You used to say 17th. He's changed it. How could I change it? It's an ink. He changed the whole page. Look. See, the shade of ink is different here from here. All right, all right. That's it. Get out. Take it easy, E.J. I've been more than accommodating here, Dewey. Now get him out of here, before I'm forced to shoot him for trespassing. Come on, Mr. Matlock. There's no sense giving E.J. any more business than he's already got. Ow! Stop pulling! He changed the book, Sheriff. You've got to believe me. Ramon was murdered. And chances are he knows by whom and what for, and probably who just tried to kill me. Until we have proof, Mr. Matlock, we are dead in the water. I know that, and you know that. Now, why don't you go on back to the motel, take some aspirin and a nice hot bath, and I'll see if I can track down that pickup you described. Ow! You can't hit me like that. You keep hitting me, and I'll keep hitting you. What's the matter? Surprised to see me? Oh, you look terrible. What happened? Somebody forced my car off the road, turned it over. But you know about that, don't you? Oh, you're talking crazy again, Mr. Matlock. Now, what do you want? More soap. I'm going to stay a while longer. Is that a problem? Not for me, it isn't. Meaning what? I mean, in some places, some people just plain don't belong. And if they had any sense, they'd clear out while they still can. What's going on in this town, Alice? Here. Because you know what? Whatever it is, I got a feeling your heart's not in it. Not enough soap? Yeah. That'd be fine.
would you go putting something like that down on your records in the first place? Why shouldn't I? It was a legitimate business transaction. Come on, EJ, use your brain. Hey, Comares was supposed to arrive on the 17th. Remember? In order to guarantee shipment by the 26th, I had to put the order in then. Yeah, it ain't his fault, Elliot. It's this bozo's fault for not taking care of that jackass lawyer when he had the chance. I couldn't. A car came along before I could make sure he was good and dead. Yeah. Well, next time, I'll handle it. There won't be a next time. The state police were there. They filed a report. He has another accident. A lot of people are going to start asking a lot of questions. So, what are we going to do? Nothing. We keep Mr. Matlock right here and make sure he stays out of trouble until the shipment goes out. After that... It won't matter how many questions people ask, because all the answers will be on their way out of the country. Shell? Hi. Hi. Just got your message. What's up? Well, I thought we'd take the current files back to the office, and Ben can figure out what he wants to do with the rest of them. All right, good idea. Can you give me a hand? Yeah. So, what kind of changes have you got in the works? For what? Business, the office. We are moving into new offices now that Ben's retired. I hadn't really thought about it. I have. Michelle, the office we've been using isn't you. It's older, established, like Ben. People walk in there, they see dark, heavy furniture, thick carpet. They expect to see a gray-haired, fatherly man in a gray suit. It's not you. Well, it's true, but... but we need something upscale. Yeah, windows, um, reception area with soft leather couches and a beautiful secretary. <laughs> Conrad. Okay, forget the couches. <laughs> well, a new office might not be a bad idea. Yeah, and computers, state-of-the-art computers. we got to move into the 20th century. You know, Ben's way wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was Ben. Ben's not going to be around anymore. fella look like? I wish I knew. How's the meatloaf tonight? I wouldn't know. This here's a chicken pot pie. Looks just like the meatloaf. No, it don't. I'll try the chicken pot pie. Coming up. Well, how are things out at the farm today? Any more accidents? No, no, thank God. About one of them a year is all I can handle. Was a fatal accident out there last year? Yeah. The year before that, as I recall. Same thing happened? Tractor tipped over on somebody last year, and boy, that seems to me like a fella got himself caught in a hay bale. Boy, that's awful. Well, it's like I've been telling you. Farming is a dangerous business. I've been at it now I own 62 years, and I tell you, it's a, it's remarkable that I still got my fingers and toes. Zach? Good evening, Mr. Ray Hall. Come on over here, Zach. I want to talk to you about how many hands we need next year. Bring your plate. This might take a while. Well, sure. sure. You're going to excuse me. He's the boss, you know. Go ahead. Yeah, I've been trying to get through to Atlanta for the past 10 minutes. All the long-distance lines in the Oak Creek area are down at the moment, sir. Well, when will they be back up? Well, I have no way of knowing, sir. Okay, thanks. Thank you, sir.
I really hate this. Well, there's your car, mister. Your transmission is shot, your universal joint is broken, your frame is bent, and I can't even find your water pump. I don't suppose it runs. Nope, don't suppose it does. Is there anywhere around here I can rent a car? Closest rental place is up in Abbotsville. But all the long distance lines are down. I can't call out. Maybe I can rent your car. Don't got one. Could always rent you my Harley, though. Well, I guess you won't be going anywhere anytime soon, will you? Well, that's the idea now, is it? Keep me bottled up here so I can't go anywhere and blow the whistle about what's going on. I don't know what you're talking about. How about renting me your car? Sorry, I'm gonna need it. Look, Mr. Matlock, you know, we got some real good fishing around here. Maybe you should just relax and enjoy yourself. As long as you can't go nowhere, man. We'll see about that. Lucas, how you doing? Just fine, Dewey. Mr. Matlock, we were wondering what happened to you. I bet you were. He seems to think that things aren't quite right around here. Come here. Pardon us. Lucas, the guy just retired. Now, he has nothing to do but sit around and try to invent some excitement with there just ain't any. Retired or no, he still pulls a lot of weight in this state, Dewey. You know why I'm here? He called the governor. Collect. But there's not a word of truth to what he's saying. I'm sorry. The heat is on. Now, not only am I going to investigate this thing, I'm going to dot every I and cross every T in the process. So where do you want to start? With the accident report on that boy who died out of the farm. You got it. You're not going to see for yourself? The sheriff here tells me there's nothing to see, Mr. Matlock. The accident happened three days ago. It appears to me that there's absolutely nothing suspicious about That's it. That's because he wrote the report. Whatever's going on around here, he's in on it. Mr. Matlock. That, that undertaker could not have known to change his books after that failed attempt on my life unless you called him. Well, I've done everything I can here. Now, if you need a ride someplace, I'd be glad to give you one. No! Okay. Well, do it. Next trip, I'll give you a couple of jars of black eyed peas out of bunches here. Mm, sounds good. You're back. Yeah. Yeah. Something just kind of drew me back. I made some phone calls while I was gone, though. Boy, that's some place you got your husband in over there in Montgomery. Don't know why you call it a home. That's one of the finest rehabilitation centers for stroke victims in the country. Expensive, though. It's hard to believe how you pay your bills on time every month, but you do. 
You got no business prying into my personal affairs. Somebody tried to kill me, Alice. It wasn't me. But you know who it was, don't you? No. Just I... like you know how the undertaker can afford that big house on the beach. And how Doc Matthews can afford to keep that big yacht down at Pensacola. Where'd all that money come from, Alice? I can't tell you. You have to. Because like I said, your heart's not in it. You're not greedy like the others. Your money goes for a good cause. So that makes you an outsider, too. And sooner or later, the others are going to realize that. And they're going to come after you, just like they came after me. <laughs> just leave me alone. Conrad McMasters. Hi. He's a looking for work. And since we are a man short, well, I thought you talked uh, to him. Yes, sir. You're the man who does my hiring and firing. What do you think? Well, if he can do everything he says he can do, I think we ought to hire him. Then we'll give him a shot. Starting pay is six twenty-five an hour. Zach will fill you in all the rest. Thanks. Welcome aboard. Fishing. Here's pretty good up around the bend here. A whole lot better up near Abbotsville. Get in. I'll give you a ride back to the motel so she can pack, and I'll take you on up there. First you want me to leave, then you want me to stay. Now you want me to leave again. Wish you fellas would make up your minds. Anybody ever tell you you were paranoid, Mr. Madlock? Jeff, I've been meaning to ask you something. Those three racehorses you got up there in Kentucky, where'd you get that kind of money? <laughs> a roast beef, a turkey, and one chicken and dumplings. What do you mean he's fishing? The sheriff saw him up at Coral Creek an hour ago fishing. Why would he go fishing? Why not? It's what you said we should tell him to do, ain't it? Why do you have to come around here just now, anyway? I got Ernie keeping an eye on him. In the meantime, I got a call from Atlanta. They want to add to the shipment going out tomorrow. They're making another delivery? Tomorrow afternoon. If Matlock buzzing around here like some infernal horsefly, why don't you just tell him to forget it? Well, maybe I'll call him back and let you tell him to forget it. Would you like that? <laughs> well, what are we going to do? We're going to get word to Ray Hall, and we're going to continue to keep an eye on Mr. Matlock. Yeah? Well, what if he goes someplace we don't want him to go? We'll make sure he does it. Sure, I'm glad I brought some bug spray. A lot of mosquitoes. A lot of mosquitoes. Yep. Boy, I'd sure hate to be somebody out here today without bug spray. Be slapping mosquitoes and green flies all day. Yep. Ah. This field here, I feed it two weeks ago. 
Timothy. Now, field up ahead here, the one we're going to diss now, that's also going to be Timothy. Which feel that like guy he killed in? Right here. In fact, that's a diss that killed him right there. We would move it, but we can't get the down tractor started. So, it just sits there reminding everybody that comes by how fragile and transitory life is. You see it happen? No, sir. I was there when Lester pulled that poor fellow out from them blades. That is bad enough. Ever seen anything like that happen before? This is the third fatal accident we've had up here. Three fatal accidents? It's a big operation. Farming is a, is a dangerous profession. Just remember that. Trespassing, Goldie. You had no right to get me fired like that. I ain't working with a drunk, and I don't want my boys working with a drunk, so just get on out of here before I have to call the sheriff. My drinking ain't the problem, old man. You are! <coughs> you get back on that contraption and get out of here before I run over the both of you. Zach, <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God! Oh. Oh. Now you get out of here, and you stay out, unless you want another whooping and some time in jail. Whoa, hey, are you all right? Sit down. All of a sudden, it just occurred to me how close I'd come to getting killed. Oh, well, it looked to me like you're on your own pretty good. You'd have cut me wide open if you hadn't have jumped in there. Thanks, I owe you. I owe you big. Well, come on, let's go get your patched up. Will you be having a cookie? Oatmeal and raisin. Oh, I'm too upset to eat. I hate this. It's just not fair. First Ben goes off, then Conrad, and neither one will tell us where they are. You know what I feel like? I feel like the stupid little women sitting at home while the big, strong men are out hunting bears. Mm -hmm. It's fish, dearie, not bears. And calm yourself. Have a cookie. You're right. If Ben's in trouble, we should be there. Oh, no, no. You don't want to be taken off like those two young women in that movie. Out on the road alone. And look at the trouble they got into. We're not Thelma and Louise, Mrs. McArdle. We're just worried about Ben and Conrad. Oh, now, girls, we women have always sat and waited for the men to come home. Haven't you ever seen the play Riders to the Sea? All the men at sea fishing and all the women at home waiting. And the storm coming up and the boats capsizing. And the men all drowning and the women wall wailing and keening and tearing their hair. This wasn't a comedy, was it? No, dearie, and neither is life. But it's what it's meant to be. The men go out to slay the dragons, and the women wait and pray. And there's always the hoochie-coochie dancers. <gasps> I have a client. Oh, my gosh, I've got to get to court. Thank you. You've been a wonderful help, Mrs. Mrs. Cardo. I try. I try. Thank you. Get it settled up. How's that are? Well, it's awful sore. But I ain't complaining. I'm just glad I still got an arm. Looks like old Lester's in thick with the boss, huh? Yep. Always has been. Was he around when those other men died in accidents, too? Well, yeah, now that you mention it, seems to me you are. You're gonna have to help me with this. I'm sorry, Zach. Who's that? Oh, 
probably one of Mr. Ray Hall's friends from Atlanta. They're always coming and going. All right, boys, we're finished here. I'll be in the barn if you need me. You fellas go on ahead, I'll catch up. I'm gonna go use the head. You do something about all that damn dust out there. I'm gonna have to go straight to the car wash after this. Uh, give us more notice next time we'll get the road oil down. <laughs> How much you got? Two million. Think you can fit it all in? Hey, you! What are you doing? Mr. Ray Hall! Listening at the window. Go around, go around and check the fire. I need help. Zach, that new guy Conrad, he come in here? No. Supposed to be down there disc in the north field. Well, he ain't. Wait a minute. Come on, let's go. What's the quickest way to town? Well, my pickup truck, I reckon. What the hell is going on? I'll tell you the way. Come on. Not enough for you, too, Ernie. You can stop slapping mosquitoes long enough to eat. Mr. Matlock. Appears to me you shot him pretty good. The hell are you talking about? The way I'm going to tell it? You come into your room, caught him in here, mistook him for a burglar and shot him, knowing full well he wasn't armed. You'll never get away with that. I don't even own a gun. Do now. Prints on it are probably a little smudged. I'm sure the ballistics are I'm afraid you're under arrest for manslaughter, Mr. Matlock. Okay, get up. He's still alive. You gotta call a doctor. <laughs> Who, Doc Matthews? He's busy. At least I'm pretty sure that's what he would say. Then I'll work on him myself. No, you don't. You're going to jail. Now stand up before I have to shoot you for resisting arrest? You go to hell. 
Then let me put it this way. Right now, your friend is alive, Mr. Matlock. It'd be a shame if in all the excitement, I accidentally killed him, wouldn't it? Let's go. I gotta get my pills. What pills? My heart, heart pills. It's beating something fierce. If I die, your scheme goes out the window. Where are they, in there? In the closet, left-hand coat pocket. No pills in here. Maybe they're in my right-hand pocket. Shot my friend. He's in there bleeding to death. Well, I gave him the key, but I, I didn't think he was going to shoot anybody. I swear. Then, then help me. I got to get him to a hospital. I can't. They'll kill me. Whose side are you on, Alice? You got to make up your mind once and for all. You going to keep me in a part of this, or are you going to help me stop it? Take my cover. Okay. What's going on? A bunch of hoods in Atlanta are using the town to launder drug money. They deliver it here, and then we smuggle it out of the country, sometimes in, in shipments of agricultural goods, and, and then sometimes... In coffins. The bodies of dead farm workers. We get a cut of everything we handle. Sometimes the people who deliver the money need a place to spend the night. And I was drowning in medical bills when this all started up. Mr. Jones knew about it, so... Next thing I know, he comes to me, and I'm, I'm on their payroll, too. Conrad must have found out about it some way. They shot him to get him and me out of the way. Now, you hold on, Conrad, you hear? Hold on. Money came in from Atlanta this afternoon. Maybe he found out about that. It's Thursday. Ramon's body gets shipped out of here today. Is that town bomb in on this? No, believe it or not... Most of the people in this town are honest, law-abiding citizens. It's just the, the, the pillars of the community were corrupt. Bleeding stopped. His pulse is better. Drop me off at the farm. What? Drop me off at the farm. Then take Conrad to the hospital. And then call the state police. Ask for Lieutenant Wells. Tell him to get down here right away. If that body leaves this town, so does all the proof. What are you going to do? I'm going to try to round me up a good old-fashioned posse. Okay, goodbye. Where's the truck to? Any minute. Look, the sheriff? He figures Matlock and Alice are on the way to the hospital. He's trying to catch up to him. What if he can't? I mean, what if they go to the cops? As long as this casket's gone by the time they get here, we got nothing to worry about. Matlock will just come off sounding like a babbling lunatic again. Which means hurry the hell up. I don't know if I can fit it all in here. I stick something with a body. Nobody's got the stomach to be poking around those remains. Mr. Metcalf, freight truck just got here. So did we. Oh, well, look who's here. You always meet at the undertaker's, or is this a special occasion? Get out, all of you. You're trespassing. I've been telling the folks how you've been laundering money for the mob. What? They'd kind of like to see inside this casket. Are you out of your mind? There's a body in this casket. A body in what else? Zach, everybody. Uh, Mr. Matlock's recently retired because mentally he's no longer competent. Now, I hate to say it, but he's senile. He's making fools of you. He's so senile. Why don't you just let the rest of us take a look in that casket? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you've got no right to it. Are you going to move out of the way or you want us to move you out? Yeah. Oh, right.
longer mentally competent, huh? A man just pulled Dewey over out on the highway. They're bringing him in. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I know the sheriff was a friend of yours. Not anymore. <laughs> Excuse me. I talked to the doctor just before I left. Conrad's out of surgery, and he's going to be all right. Oh, thank you, Alice. I guess it's time for me to turn myself in. I'll put in a good word for you. And thanks again for Conrad. You weren't party. suspicious when Mrs. McArdle kicked you out of the house this afternoon. No, she said she was having the rugs cleaned. She kicks me out of the house all the time. It came as a total surprise. Oh. And you're having a good time. I'm having a fine time. I'm enjoying retirement. I had a good time up at Old Creek. Now and then. Any hoochie coochie dancers? Huh? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the easy life's the good life. <laughs> Somebody else? Excuse me. Come in. Oh. Come in, Frank. I lost Ben. I know I heard. I shouldn't have fired you, Ben. I'd like you to handle my appeal. Oh, Frank. I'm retired, you know. Come on, Ben. Nah, I might call you by the wrong name. Men my age get forgetful. <laughs> name your price. Come on in, Frank. Have some punch. The spike stuff's green. Shall Guess what? What? Frank just asked me to handle his appeal. That's Are you going to do it? You're not retiring? No. I'm not retiring. I guess I, I guess I was feeling sorry for myself. I retired and thought things would be better. But I know how to do one thing. Practice law. It brings me a great deal of joy. And anything that gives that much happiness to I to give it up, I'd be a perfect fool. Not retired. Not retired. Oh, you son of a gun. Oh, too. Yeah. Oh. Uh, sorry. I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad to be back. <laughs>